the government wants to shut down all the universities, especially social science departments, as far as anyone can tell. I mean, they have stopped funding anybody. All the research scholars have stopped getting funding. They've cut down seats. They're, you know, they want to determine our curriculum in some kind of standard fashion across the country. They don't want us to do research. They don't give us any leave to do research. So as far as the government goes, they have absolutely zero interest in social science education. Uh, they may have some interest in technical education, but even that uh, is clearly not the case because if their view of science is that we had plastic surgery because of Ganesha's head, then really you can't be interested in science if you have no basic sense of science. So let's not even talk about this government, which is the most anti, not just anti-intellectual, but just, you know, it's going to ruin the educational system for the next God knows how many years by putting in all sorts of ill-equipped people into the system. And the problem is that we're going to see the effects lasting a long time. So I don't think that if you leave it to government that the future of education is very uh, inspiring. But if people are able to kind of fight back and protect some kind of autonomy within the system, then there might be hope. But again, it's we're talking about very few institutions, uh, really. Like, if you look at the vast majority of colleges in this country, they're all state government funded or private funded, in which anyways, people don't have any autonomy. People are scared to talk. How many people do you see from private colleges writing in the newspapers? How many people do you see? I mean, yes, a few from Jindal and APU and all that, but that's a different type of, I mean, we're talking about the vast majority are anyways silenced, anyways teaching shops. So I'm not sure that this government has, or any, or the government before that had really thought through education at all. Do you have a view on how education institutions should be reacting to this climate? What they should be doing? Well, obviously we need to kind of hang in there, try and ensure that we at least have the freedom to teach what needs to be taught. Uh, because with this CBCS coming in, um, you know, there's a real danger of this kind of standardized curriculum being taught across all universities. And uh, I don't really see much resistance coming to all these, you know, against all these changes. I mean, there's so much focus on JNU and how they're resisting, but that's just one small kind of blip in the whole educational scene. And most people have just sort of given in. So I think we're headed for fascism and unless we, I mean, it's really, really serious. Right now there's nothing um, kind of hopeful on the scenario unless you really fight unless different people come together and build up movements and so on. Yeah, no, I'm sorry if I've sounded really pessimistic um, and bleak about what's happening, but I think what's important is to always remember what Gramsci said, that one needs uh, pessimism of the intellect and optimism of the will, because I think the situation will get better if people organize, if we are concerned about what's happening and we do take up issues and we you know keep fighting in wherever we are and whether you're in the courts or you're in the universities to try and ensure some standards uh, it will change and things will get better but it's going to be a long fight <laughs>